Well, I am really excited. Today, I am talking with the founder of a very, very unique platform called A Billion. That's abillion.com. The cost is based in Singapore, and he is a full vegan. And he's got a great story of how he became vegan and how that led to leaving a very lucrative career to start a billion, which is a socially conscious uh, platform where you can actually change the world with every post that you make, every purchase that you make, and every product that you sell. So, because great to have you here. Thank you very much, Kathleen. And it's really with every bite you take. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show, where your host, Kathleen Gage, shines the spotlight on vegan and plant-based businesses and entrepreneurs newers, from all walks of life committed to cruelty-free eating, healthy lifestyles, animal compassion, and the environment. Enjoy the show. Yeah, hey Kathleen, it's really nice to nice to be here. I'm actually in Singapore. <laughs> so you're not originally from Singapore. Where are you originally from? Uh, I'm I'm originally from India, which is kind of also in the same vicinity, but I spent the first four years of my life in India before moving to New York City, which is where I spent most of my life before moving moving here. And and what made you move to Singapore? What what was the impetus for that? Oh, like like a lot of people, just a job. Um, and uh, you know, I was in a totally different industry before I started a billion. Um, but, uh, I, my career took me kind of all around the world. Actually, before I moved to Singapore, I was in California for a couple of years, uh, in public service, uh, working with the state of California. And, uh, I spent most of my life, uh, in, uh, in sort of the investment and financial services mm -hmm. industry in New York city. So, so it was really just a job. So it, it was a job, but it's turned into you actually left that and you you started a billion dot com. That's a billion dot com. And when I first read about it, it was like, this is an incredible, incredible vision that you have. And then I read further that you've actually donated two and a half million dollars to social change. And there's a lot of really amazing things you're doing with a billion. So let's take a step back. And I want to talk, first of all, when you became vegan, what your your motivation for becoming vegan was and how that really springboarded into what you're doing today. Sure. Thank you for the question. Um, I spent my whole life uh, loving animals and uh, I'd call myself an animal rights activist, but I didn't go vegan until a long time into my life. In fact, it was, uh, it was after I, I watched a film called earthlings mm. Uh, and, uh, it was a confluence of factors for me. My, you know, my mom and dad got sick in all basically at the same time in 2007, 2008, uh, I got a dog in my life and that was kind of this revelation of having an animal in my life and being so close to that animal. Uh, and then I watched this film and that sort of forever left an indelible mark on me. And, uh, I decided to go vegan. And, um, and it's a decision that I have never looked back from. And, uh, of course it felt like a sacrifice. I was already vegetarian, um, you know, when I made that decision and it still felt like a huge sacrifice and a compromise. I think my growing up in New York city, my food pyramid was basically a slice of pizza. Right. And so <laughs> it was a big change and, uh, you know, it, it, being vegetarian, uh, was already something that, you know, where you always have to ask three or four questions, but it was great because it did give me a sense of purpose and values and the most basic things in my life. Like, you know, what I eat and what I do when I step outside, you know, for the day and going, being, going, going vegan was just incredibly transformative. And, and it really brought a whole new depth and sense of purpose and uh, mindfulness to to my life. In the beginning, it felt like a sacrifice and a compromise. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it's interesting because I think for a lot of us, we do get to that place of having much more awareness around everything that we're doing. And 
initially we don't realize what's going to happen. I I'm coming up on five years of being vegan. And initially I was a plant-based eater. I wouldn't call myself vegan. And now I proudly call myself vegan, but I had to go through some, uh, if you will, stripping away of the veils of denial and being out of alignment. Now, what you've done so masterfully is you've taken your passion for being a vegan and your, your ethics around being a vegan, and you've aligned it with your life's work. So that is, when you started in 2018, a billion.com, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal business model and uh, social change model. Um, tell us about what a billion is and let's let's dig deep into where it's going, the impact that it's had and how people can actually be listed on a billion. Sure. Thanks, Kathleen. And, you know, look, I, I hope that one day I'm able to say you know, without a doubt that it's a phenomenal business model that we have gotten to the stage and, and where it is, where what we are doing and and this business model that we are trying to reinvent and recreate for tech uh, and align, you know, align sort of profits with social good and impact actually becomes a successful business model, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, I, I, the first person to say, I mean, we're not a profitable company yet. We make some money, but, you know, we have a long way to go in proving that this business model can actually work. And I'm, I appreciate you being excited about it. I'm of course, as excited about it as you are. Uh, and, uh, and, you know, we created it and really we, in, a billion kind of came out, uh, for me, you know, and, and I spent uh, my whole life, you know, nearly like 15 years professionally working in a completely different industry before I decided to go into tech. Uh, and I am, and, and the industry that I was in was wall street. And what I found was in 2016, 17 was a lot of the mistakes, a lot of the problems that we saw, you know, during the global financial crisis in 2008 on wall street, were just being repeated in different ways in tech. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'd say like the, one of the, the biggest kind of embodiments of that was the 2016 U.S. election, where a lot of what we learned about how the election was won was through election interference and misinformation campaigns uh, on platforms like Facebook and Twitter, uh, and how our personal private data, the data that we contributed to growing and building these platforms, which we as you know users just kind of take for granted, um, was being used against us and manipulated and used to manipulate us. Um, and I'm not a very political person, so it was less for me about who won, but more about kind of how how the tech industry was starting to behave. Uh, and we've just seen that. I mean, that hasn't changed. We've continued to see that over the last five, six, seven years, right? Um, that a lot of these companies are not acting responsibly with our data. There's this, and there's so much discussion around this today, which I'm so happy to see that there's so much more discussion about this because when we're starting to think about these issues, nobody was talking about them, mm -hmm. but it's really, it, you know, why, why are algorithms being designed to spread misinformation, to spread violence, to spread hate, and the question for me in 2016, at the end of 2016, was can we build, can we design algorithms to actually spread impact and drive sustainability and drive social good and social benefit? Or are we that, in a way, are we that effed as a society? Have we gotten to the stage where that is just not possible uh, and I just simply refuse to believe that I just, I, I, I'm, you know, I, I refuse to believe that. And I felt like there was really an opportunity and I couldn't shake that off. And so I kind of went into my boss's office in, uh, in 20, 2017 in February of 2017. And I said, Hey, I've got to do something about this problem. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm resigning. And that was kind of the beginning of a billion for me. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, we're, uh, what we're doing is building a different kind of social media platform, a different kind of marketplace platform, a platform where people around the world, um, find inspiration and choose more sustainably every single day. And we make kind of this journey around sustainability, this journey around being vegan, which we have, we very much associate as, you know, sort of the center, the foundation of 
the global sustainability movement. You can't think about being, you can't act on being more sustainable without looking at the things that we eat and looking at the other things that we purchase and consume. Consumption at the end of the day is probably the biggest opportunity and failure around sustainability. And so what we're trying to do is really just improve access, um, help people have better experiences. If people have better experiences when they try this lifestyle, even if it's just once, if they have better experiences, they're going to be much more likely to be open-minded about it and do it again. Right. 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 And so well, we're really, you know, I love your optimism and I, I, sometimes I'm very optimistic that things are changing pretty rapidly and other times I'm very frustrated. And so it's really, it's refreshing to hear that optimism and you're not just talking about it. You're doing something about it. And, and I want to dig deeper into how the platform actually works and, and uh, how you came up with the name a billion um, really digging into that. But I want to remind people that you're listening to the vegan visibility podcast Show. I'm Kathleen Gage. I'm your host, and I'm talking with founder of abillion.com. And it, it's a fascinating platform. And, you know, I really do say I, I appreciate your optimism because sometimes it is frustrating when you're talking one on one with people and they're like, oh, I could never give up my cheese or I could never get. And it's like, sure. wait a minute, do you do you realize by that choice what you're doing to the planet, to people's uh, emotions? Uh, we can track what people eat to their depression and the violence and all that's going on in the world. So it's about changing the narrative. So let's start with, um, you know, what what exactly is the platform and how are people benefiting from either listing their business products and, and products and services, whatever it may be there, and those that are utilizing what's on the platform? Okay, yeah. Uh, I mean, thank you for the question, Kathleen. So in terms of how the platform works, right, you want to think about it as, we're, we're trying to tackle consumption and we're trying to help people make better, more informed decisions around the things that they eat. So we've actually taken something that's been around on the internet for you know more than 20 years, which is consumer reviews. And we're all familiar with companies like TripAdvisor. We might use platforms like Yelp and we might even use company, uh, might, might even use apps and platforms like Vivino, which help people discover wine around the world. Um, these are really, really great platforms because what they do is they give consumers power. They give consumers this source of truth, right? So if I'm going and I'm looking for a hotel in Vietnam, I'm likely going to go on TripAdvisor and see what people are saying before I even go and try to make a booking for a hotel, right? Mm -hmm. And 25 years ago, companies like that really were in a way seen as advocacy platform as, as in a way uh, platforms for activism right now hotels were there was really not a lot of transparent information about hotels 25 years ago there was no source of truth there was no benchmark and so by giving the average person somebody like you somebody like me the ability to go into a hotel take a photo say what they like don't like that was really powerful because then what that did was started to hold companies accountable for their customers' um, experiences. And so we've seen this kind of play out many times over and we felt like, hey, okay, what can we build? We are trying, our goal is to help a billion people go vegan. Our goal is to help, in order to do that, we also need to create billions of options around the world. Mm -hmm. We need to help businesses and we need to kind of unlock the dialogue with businesses and show them that there is an opportunity right? That there's a consumer demand, that there's interest. And we need to also show them and help them see kind of how, you know, how they, in this merit, sort of meritocracy around their businesses, how they're performing versus others, how they can do better. So if we're talking, you know, how do we get that kind of data? And the best way to do it, you know, we found is, is to be consumer activists, is to be consumer advocates, uh, and so we created a consumer review platform and we've made it very social. We've done a few things to make it look and feel and, and really become very social and kind of bring a community together instead of it just kind of being kind of the boring old days of consumer right. review platforms from 20 years ago. And I think that, so it's that combination for us of having a really strong community that's out there in the world reviewing and creating content. Uh, we now have people creating reviews in 183 countries around the world. And they're just ordinary people who find us. 
And then really then taking all of that data and using it to transform the world. And I'll give you one example. We did, you know, in 2017, I was based here in Singapore and we looked at 5,000 restaurant menus and we added up the number of vegan options at all of these businesses. And what was really crazy to see was that across 5,000 restaurant menus, there were less than 1,000 vegan options, right? And that added up to less than 2% of sort of the options on these menus, right? Which we were like, okay, if we want the world to be more plant forward, we want people to be able to choose, they need to have more options and the options need to be great. Mm -hmm. So what we started to do was send all of this content that was being made in Singapore and around the world to these businesses and say, hey, look, look, there's an opportunity. This is what people are saying about your products, right? About your options. We do that with consumer products companies as well. And so through that, right, we've been able to make a massive dent in a market like Singapore. We've gone from less than a thousand vegan options at 5,000 restaurants here to about 28,000 or 27 or 28,000 options at more than five, th- 5,700 restaurants here that are just on our platform in the span of five years, right? By sharing all of that data. So that's like a 28X kind of growth. And we're not the only company that's responsible for it. The world is changing. There's a lot of companies that are making products now, making it easier for businesses to kind of, you know, in a way do the right thing. But for us, it's how, how do we have that conversation with that steakhouse? How do we have a conversation with the Japanese restaurant mm-hmm. or an Italian restaurant and show them that it pays and it's good for their business, right? To have just be more inclusive, right? right? And then we back that up with the customers. So we then are able to feature these companies and rank them and rate them and you know show them off to the consumer that is looking for these options. And what is kind of really interesting about our platform is more than 65% of our members, our users around the world in our community are actually meat eaters. And we may, we may, you know, we're probably not responsible for their decision to say, hey, you know, I'm going to eat less meat. That might happen because they visit an animal sanctuary. That might happen because they have a health problem. That may happen because their child has decided they've learned something or watched a documentary and decided to go vegan. And now Mm -hmm. the parent is kind of racing to catch up with that. Right. Or at least make sure their, their child is happy. So it could happen for a variety of reasons, but then ultimately then we become this platform through our app, through our website, this platform that then helps them on that journey. Right. And hopefully if we're able to provide them with a really good experience, we're able to help them connect with, great options wherever they are, whether that's in Portland or that's in Maine or that's in New York City Mm -hmm. or that's in London or that's in Cape Town, South Africa or in Rio de Janeiro or in Singapore. We're now in 183 countries around the world. We're able able to help people discover plant-based options, get into a community that then rallies and supports them on this sort of path right? Uh, Because that's often missing for people. We have a really active user base in Sao Paulo. And there's people in Sao Paulo who are interested in living healthier. They just don't know how to do it. And they also don't have a community around them. So we're able to actually bring that community online and really connect that community. And through our community now, we have people who've met on a billion who are you know, interacting with each other online and offline now in the real world. So that's really exciting. We're trying to build this platform for, you know, change in this space on a global scale. And the way that- Let's take a look at that because it's like, now do you only have restaurants on a billion or is it other products and services that are aligned with the vegan movement, the plant-based eating, the plant-based living? Because I know myself, it's like, Food options are are relatively easy for most of us nowadays, but then we move into the whole thing around cosmetics, around personal yeah. care products, around clothing. Um, d- dig deeper into that. What options do people have when they go to a billion? Yeah, uh, for sure, Kathleen. Uh, it's so much bigger than food at restaurants. I mean, so many of us love to cook and we don't even go to restaurants mm-hmm. that very often. And, and so restaurants actually serve as a very important utility 
because for, you know, those times when people go out to eat, uh, you know, we, we help people find great options anywhere. Right. And so we have 110,000 restaurants around the world on our platform. And we have, you know, millions of sort of vegan options now that are rated and reviewed from those restaurants. In addition to that, we have around 540,000 consumer products and sort of the world's largest sort of directory and database now of, of, of vegan consumer products. And they're really across 200 or so different categories. But if I had to bucket them into three, it would be food, beauty and wellness and uh, fashion, right? Mm-hmm. Those would sort of be the three. Right. And then underneath that, you've got a multitude of, of categories and options. And that's across 106,000 brands globally. So mm-hmm. you don't have to be a vegan company to be f- featured on a billion. Um, we take a very meritocratic approach to that because ultimately we want to, again, we want to drive that change with all sorts of businesses, right? We want, of course, 100% dedicated vegan businesses, restaurants, brands on our platform, and we love them. And we, of course, want to have those conversations with companies like Unilever and Danone mm-hmm. and make sure that they're addressing and they're seeing the opportunity and they're in front of the customer and they're addressing that by creating great products, by creating better products and more of them. So you've been around since 2018 and um, you, you've you grown quite uh, rapidly and you have definitely growth plans for the future with uh, profitability as part of that. What would you say has been the greatest challenge as you've grown your business? You said that you're not profitable yet. Uh, when do you estimate that you will be profitable and what would it take for that to happen? I, we think that that's 2024 for us. You know, okay. one of the, the one of the great things about software, I mean, we're a tech, we're, we're a technology company. We have our our team is largely software engineers uh, and designers and data mm-hmm. scientists, right? Uh, so we have a small team of 24, 25 people. And uh, so we don't have any manufacturing. We don't have any logistics or supply chain or raw materials costs. And so we're not, you know, we're not impacted by the sort of the volatility around commodities prices or supply chain breakdowns around the world like we have seen for the last three, four years, right? For us, what we're trying to do is really create a valuable service that lives online, right? And so in a way, our business doesn't cost a ton of money to mm-hmm. sort of build and and continue sort of operating, right? Our, in, our the, 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 the largest portion of sort of our our infrastructure spend and how we spend money ends up being, you know, our, our team, right. Which we try to maintain a small and very impactful team. Um, so yeah, I mean, we are, you know, we are kind of off to the races now. 2022 was really an opportunity for us to, we'd gotten to the size and the scale on kind of like the, the, the experience of a billion Mm -hmm. that we could then kind of start to turn the wheels of motion, the, the wheels of commerce, we could start to kind of get those turning and we uh, built and developed a peer-to-peer marketplace. It's really the world's first peer-to-peer marketplace focused on all things that are vegan. And we have, you know, we have activists and authors selling books on there. Uh, we have artists on there selling artwork. We have um, nonprofits around the world, a lot of animal sanctuaries that are now using our marketplace to raise funding mm-hmm. uh, for specific campaigns uh, that they're doing. Uh, and it's just, and we have people even advertising services, uh, on there and, and, and listing services. So we've got a marketplace that's in app that anyone, anywhere in the world, I actually use it every weekend. I have a couple of orders this weekend. Um, I sell, I make sourdough bread. That was my COVID hobby. So I, uh, I make my own, I, I have my own sourdough starter that I culture and I, um, I make sourdough bread on the weekends and I actually sell it to other members of our community in Singapore. And for anybody who buys my bread, they get half of the sale back, half of what they spend back to donate to animal sanctuaries. So how cool is that? So one of the very unique things about our marketplace is every transaction has to have a minimum of 1% of the transaction that goes back to charities that we support. I love that. The buyer pays the full amount, but then they get back in their billion wallet 
whatever the seller has allocated. So in my case, I allocate 50% of the sale uh, back to charities. Um, on average, on our platform, sellers allocate 20% of every transaction to doing good, doing good for the animals in the environment. And, you know, and, and that. that is a really a beautiful thing. We're really trying to create a very different kind of marketplace, a marketplace where every transaction creates meaningful impact in the world. Um, and if you're listening, if for anybody who's listening that has a product, maybe you sell it on Etsy, you know, or you've created something or you want to create something, check out a billion, you know, post your post, post your transactions on a billion because you're going to be able to connect that to a really great group of, of people around the world who want to be supportive of your business and supportive of the kinds of products and services. And that's open, not just for private sellers, people like you and me, but it's also open for, um, uh, for brands, for businesses, anybody who's doing selling direct to consumer anywhere in the world. Uh, so that's one side of our business. The other side of our business is we have a, a SaaS product. We have a, we have a, a way for co all the companies. We have about 215,000 companies now between the restaurants and the consumer products companies on our platform. And we want to give them the ability to, of course, reply back to their customers mm -hmm. that are posting feedback to, you know, really kind of enhance their brand and their products and their brand reputation on our platform. So we have a product, uh, we have a product for them and we have about 5,000 brands and businesses around the world that are signed up for that service. So the, the the question that begs to be answered is how do you make money? How do you as the, yeah. the founder make money? Well, through those through through those two things that we just described. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our 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 sort of our SaaS and our marketing product for companies, that's a subscription based product. Okay. Um and then for our marketplace uh, there's no fees to list. Listings are completely free. Um, uh, we make money on every transaction. There's, you know, payment processing fees and and other fees, but they're very minimal right now. They're five percent. So okay. we we, okay. we take five percent of every transaction, and the reality is that most of that goes towards you know paying for the infrastructure that we're right, providing. Right, right, absolutely. That. Yeah. So, so I'm curious. Do you have um, because I work with clients who do summits and they do live events and they do hybrid events where it's uh, some in person, some are virtual. Do you have a, a category where people who are putting on events can actually post about their event and sell tickets through a billion? Absolutely. Yeah, we are actually sponsoring an event coming up in New York and Brooklyn in May. Uh, and, uh, and the event sponsor is, uh, it's, it's the vegan women's summit. I, I was going to ask you if it's the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Jennifer, uh, is, yeah, is it, that's right. Yeah. Jenny. Yeah. So Jenny's incredible. Uh, we were the headline sponsor last year for her event in Los Angeles. And this year we're doing it in New York. And again, we're, we're the, uh, presenting sponsor, the headline sponsor this time around and VWS is selling tickets, uh, through a billion, uh, wonderful through through our marketplace. That's wonderful. One of the doing, so yeah. so let's look at. Well, I'll have to talk to you about that offline. But uh, let's look at the trends going on, uh, not only in the business world, but in uh, just yeah. people's lifestyles and in health and in um, ethical ways of living. Where do you see the whole vegan movement, and not just about not eating animals, but truly about the um, the the complete picture of what it means to live an ethical life and how we can take more responsibility. So what do you see for the future? So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people who are living in cities and working, going, you know, doing sort of the daily grind. Um, when we talk to people, right, people, so many people want to do something meaningful with their lives. Um, a lot of people just want to hang out and work nine to five, but a lot of people want to do very meaningful things with their lives and they just don't know how, mm -hmm. right? Um, and we all kind of obsess about building a dream business or going and starting a hotel on a little beach somewhere. And, you know, but the reality is that it's so much simpler than that, right? Is it, I, I have found in my life the greatest sense of joy and fulfillment by doing simple things like changing the way that I eat. And that has created mindfulness uh, and consciousness and gratitude and and a really a feeling of purpose and a sense of purpose and living my values. 
Mm -hmm. which is such a rare thing in society today, right? People want to live their values. They want to feel connected. They want to have a sense of purpose, right? And I see that that is really ultimately what the vegan movement or any movement where there is sort of an identity that it offers you. And I think that's one of the really great things about the intersectionality. I was just on the phone an hour ago with uh, with, with someone in New York and we were talking about this. Um, and uh, and there's so much intersectionality between, you know, the gender rights movement, the gender equality movement, the, uh, you know, the LGBTQ movement, the minority movement, the rights movement, and the animal rights movement, mm-hmm. right? I mean, uh, for a lot of your listeners, I'm sure, you know, it, they know this already, but Coretta Scott King, right? alongside being, you know, being the person that really influenced Martin Luther King, you know, during the civil rights movement as his wife, right? She was really kind of the, she was like the the person kind of behind the scenes really driving that, right? Um, she was also for a vast portion of her life afterwards, after Dr. King's death, was an animal rights activist, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Um and really saw that, you know, there was, there was just so much overlap there. So we just, I think that the vegan movement and whether you go vegan or whether you just are, you're thinking about it, because I know for a lot of people, it it seems overwhelming. And there's also kind of this dark veil that all of us in the vegan movement are responsible for responsible for, I think that people don't respond well to guilt. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. And people don't respond well to guilt and shaming. It it pushes them into a corner and then they either feel victimized or they feel like they need to go on the offense. And what we have to do is find ways to effectively communicate and influence people in ways that they respond positively and change their behaviors positively. Right. Um and uh, and so I think that I think that there's really an opportunity to do that. Uh, and it's it's our responsibility. And this is where for us, we really for us, we wanted to build a very different kind of social platform, even with the interactions on our platform. It was very important. How do we how do we create a framework so people don't start attacking each other? Mm-hmm. And that's what we that's why we started by creating a framework that was actually focused on consumer reviews, because with consumer reviews, sure, you could like say that you hate you really dislike something. It's like, oh, this. I don't know, this plant based cheese sucks. And, but you're not, a you know, and somebody else could say, oh, well, I really like it. Right. OK, well, great. Like, but, you know, there'd be it's it's more about kind of the experience and less about those two individuals kind of right. going at it. And, you know, so we've removed a lot of this, the stigma. We've removed a lot of the stigma. We've, re- we've removed a lot of the sort of the, 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 the hate that, you know, goes on between kind of a, a portion of sort of the activist movement, right. um, which I have been part of, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm very proud to be part of. But, you know, there's there's this kind of back and forth between the trolls and like the activist movement. And I just really felt like, Hey, we've got to kind of stop Two, Absolutely. Two is this movement is bigger than just any sort of part of it. I think that we're all learning and we're all on this journey and there's a lot of interesting companies that have been created. And some of these ideas and businesses will, you know, will flourish and others and, you know, will not have as much of an impact as, you know, they were originally kind of thought to maybe have. Um, I think that one thing that we all need to recognize is there is a huge push and a huge interest in what we are doing just purely from a health perspective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's people who want to eat less processed foods. There's people who don't know what that means because everything in the world, rice is a processed food. Right. Right. But we don't think of it as such. Everything is processed. But that is a reality. And, and, you know, we need to think about, well, okay, what does that mean? And how do we help people through personalization of content, discover the things that they're most likely to try? And that's really the cool thing about building a platform that's focused on data, right, is based on kind of what we can learn and understand about somebody, 
we can then hopefully personalize the experience. We're not there yet, right? Right. But that's our goal is to personalize the experience to sort of bring them into the idea of veganism in a way that they're most likely to respond positively to it by. I love it. I love what you're doing. I love your vision and I love your, your positive outlook on it because, you know, you, you, you mentioned about the, in a way, the segregation within the community and, you know, that, that went on with the LGBTQ community many, many, many years ago, there was the women's community, the men's community, the leather community, the, this community that, and, and it's like, wait a minute, we're, we're all, and I, you know, I have a wife of 33 years, so I'm very, you know, very knowledgeable about that particular uh, process, the stone wall, the whole nine yards. And it's like, we accomplish more when we come together, whether it's, uh, you know, coming together with many, many different minorities so that we have a larger voice. And I love the voice that you have out there. It's wonderful. So in closing, um, what are your final thoughts for people? And again, let people know how they can find you and how they can get involved by posting on the site or actually utilizing the services and the products of the people who do have listings on the site. Yeah. So th thank you. Thank you, Kathleen, for having me on the show and uh, uh, very inspired by what you're doing. And so thank you. Um, people can get involved. It's really straightforward. Download the Abillion app. Uh, you can put in my first name, Vikas, V-I-K-A-S, uh, as an invitation code, uh, which will actually give you a dollar to donate uh, to, to animal rescue or to feeding hungry children or to planting trees. Uh, so right away, just by downloading this app, you can create impact. And the beautiful thing about what we're doing is that, you know, you can use the Abillion platform to record kind of your daily progress. And every single time that you do, whether you're vegan or you're listening and you're a curious meat eater, whatever it is, by just doing that, by recording it, you are then helping other people discover those options. You're making it easier for other people to have better experiences. And then you're also creating impact because we're going to be giving you a donation credit and we're going to be giving you equity in our company. So every single time you eat vegan, every single time you buy a vegan product, a sustainable product, and you just post a photo of it and post a review, we give you a dollar of equity in our company. Because ultimately what we're trying to disrupt, disrupt is this way of Silicon Valley doing business, which is the ownership and control of these kinds of companies should be in the hands of their community, not right. in the hands of a few people like Mark Zuckerberg. So that is something that we have really been working towards. Um, I'm very, very proud to say that more than 11,000 people in the Abillion community worldwide now actually own equity in our company. Mm. Uh, and uh, and if you'd like to do more, yeah, get on the app and and take a look at some of the things that we have done and, you know, click the map and just see what pops up. And you might be surprised, even if you know your neighborhood and you know your town and your city really well, you might be surprised by some of the things that we show you that are available at, you know, restaurants and businesses around you. Absolutely. Well, because this has been delightful and I, I look forward to learning more about what you're doing and getting more involved. And I want Thank to remind you, people that you've been listening to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. This is Kathleen Gage. I'm your host and I encourage you go out, do the right thing, live ethically and be aware of what you're doing to the animals with every bite of food that you take. Have a great day. You've been listening to the Vegan Visibility Podcast Show. Be sure to subscribe to get notified when the next episode is live. And we always appreciate reviews. Join us next time for more inspiration, education, and motivation to build your business one cruelty-free and healthy person at a time.